Yes? I'm Count Dracula. I have just leased fly. The blood is the life, Mr. Renfield. Oh, yeah. I hope you will find this comfortable. Thanks. It looks very inviting. Our only chance of saving Miss Nina's life is to find the hiding place of Dracula's leaf. They're all crazy except you and me. Sometimes I have me doubts about you. Okay, so let's go ahead and take Miss Renata's blood pressure. Depends on the day. <laughs> it can be 180 over 100, or it can be 140 over 80, or it can be 110 over 60. So the important part about the blood pressure now is that we're going to remember those numbers. 118 over 76. Okay, so you're going to put your blood pressure cuff when you're drawing the blood between those two numbers. So somewhere around 90, 95. The reason for that is for arterial flow in the limb still, but not a bunch of venous return. It's going to make your vessels actually swell more. It'll trap more blood in there. Okay. Okay, so we already know, we already know that... Um, She's got difficult veins to find, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take that blood pressure cuff off and probably get a little smaller than this. It's too large for you. Yeah, this one's a large well, one. Yeah. Do we... It's either that or put it up higher on the arm. Right? Put it right up in her armpit, yeah. <laughs> and that's going to be uncomfortable right here. Well, the next step in this process is we're going to put that foot away up there. Yeah. Up higher. Now, you're going to need an assistant with this because someone else is going to control the bulb on that eventually. Okay. But we're going to put it all the way up as high as it'll go so that you have a good feel to work in. And that's your good arm? Yeah. And let's move her sleeve out of the way. Now we're not going to pump up that blood pressure cuff yet. So we'll go ahead and get our hot pack ready. And lay the hot pack on the place where we're going to find our vein. Lay it, lay it across the antecubital space. There you go. Okay, now you're just going to sit and talk for five or ten minutes. And the goal here is the hot pack is going to help dilate all those blood vessels so we get a good vein. But you don't, you don't, you don't need um, to have any pressure on that just yet. You're going to let them dilate naturally. Five minutes can be a lifetime. <laughs> Do we need five minutes with you? Probably. Oh, all right. <laughs> Did you find it? Would you? First? No. But would anybody else? Probably. Yeah. Hospitals do. Yeah. Did you feel anything when you felt any? Did you find um, it? I thought I felt something, but it could have been. Well, you'll find something better than me. The goal with this is that our tourniquet time, once we have the blood pressure cuff inflated, should be no more than a minute. A minute, a minute is maximum. Well, that's my thing. Even with the blood pressure, you're still going to need a tourniquet? No, that, no, that, yeah, that is, is acting as a tourniquet right, right now. Right, this is acting as a yeah. tourniquet. Yeah. See, the goal of a tourniquet, a real tourniquet, is to stop blood flow at all so that there's not virtually any arterial flow. You want to save the limb by giving it a little, but the more arterial flow you have, if there's an injury out there, there goes your blood. Yeah. So th that the goal of a tourniquet is to stop that from getting there. We're doing the opposite. We're using the same principle to fill that limb with blood right, and not so let a bunch escape. Yeah. Because when you take a blood pressure, that first number, that top number, that's the number at which you're squeezing down hard enough that it has a difficult time getting through there. Or you're taking the pressure off so it starts to be able to flow through that passage. That's where the top of the systole is where it's pushing beyond that. The bottom number, when it goes away, that's when you've reached the ambient pressure in the body. You know that because you don't hear that sound where it's forcing past an obstacle anymore. So we're using that same science to do this.
Okay, when you feel for these, you probably shouldn't use a thumb. You should one right. or two, your index finger or your... I'll make, I'll make a fist. And the goal with making a fist is we want to make sure they're just opening and closing their hand. They're not tensing up all the muscles in their arm. They tense up muscles in their arm, especially drawing potassium, they'll raise the potassium level. So it's you lower the limb, open, close, open, close. If you don't find anything right away, let's go ahead and put that hot pack back on. And let it sit. There's a couple of main places you can look for this pain, right? Right in the center and right on either side, medial or lateral. She has a lot of superficial lines. <laughs> we don't care about its personality. We care that it gives us the blood. Um, one of the things that you got to be aware of with our patients is most of them are rather large. Mm -hmm. So they're not necessarily not right, right on the surface. Yeah. Um, when you're feeling for that vein, what you're supposed to feel for is not only that it's there, but the direction that it's running and the depth. Yeah. So if you know all those things, you can get one lumen right inside the other lumen and you get blood. I know. <laughs> okay. So open, close, open, close. Now, Open, close, open, close. Wait, 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 stop. What you're going to do now is you're going to pump that blood pressure up. Cynthia's going to pump the blood pressure up up to about 85, just for a few seconds. And you're going to see if you can find that. Now grasp and hold. Just see if you can find one. Okay. Wait, really? Oh, that's real good in a health video. Right here. Find one? Yes. Let's make sure we don't have a tourniquet on too long. If you found one, take it off. Found it. Just, so just take the pressure off. Oh, what a lot of difference. It disappeared. <laughs> you know what it's That's there. exactly why we're doing this. Yeah. Okay, hot pack for a few more minutes. Take the ball out of her hand, let her open and close her hand a little bit. The, the <coughs> big difference between a blood pressure cuff and a regular Penrose drain type tourniquet <laughs> is that it's going to exert a lot more pressure in a larger area. And when it does that, you want to make sure that your tourniquet time is shorter than it normally would be with a regular blood draw. And if you take the pressure off for a while once you found it, you can let some oxygenated blood flow into that lamb. And we'll get good lab results and not stress out the patient too much. Okay. So as I described before, we're going to use a 10cc syringe to draw these labs instead of the vacuum tainer tube mm -hmm. because quite often the vacuum inside the tube is too great for the blood vessel that you're trying to draw from, especially, especially on smaller veins. Um, we don't find a whole lot of that in our larger folks, but with smaller veins like the back of the hand and whatnot, you don't want to use that vacuum tainer alone. You do want to use a 10cc syringe. The goal with this is you can control the amount of vacuum exerted on the inside of that vein. And if the vein tends to collapse, you can take the vacuum off and let it refill and draw some more blood. And we'll go over the transfer of that sample into the vacuum container as soon as we're done. Okay, so let's go ahead and take off the heat pack and let's clean the area with some alcohol. Okay, Cynthia. You can go ahead, if you're ready, Glenny, you can go ahead and pump up that tourniquet, give her the, the ball back. We're going to open close the hand a few times. Pump up the blood pressure cuff to about 85 or 90. And if you, okay, find, go this, let me know when you're there. Okay, let's find that vein and go get it. Now, And you're going to stick with one hand. As soon as you're in there and get a flashback, then you pull back on that syringe. Okay, now we can take, we'll tell you, as soon as you get about a cc of blood in there, because that's all we need for this test, that you can go ahead and take the pressure off of the blood pressure cuff. She can relax her arm. I oh, okay, okay. You can have the patient actually reach over and hold down on that cotton 
and tell them not to bend their arm because that's how they get a bruise. Well, what are you doing? I just no. put the no. lead on. No. no. You don't want to do that. Because if you do that, how do you get the blood from the syringe into the tube? Um, the goal there's is... There's an adapter that goes in there. No. 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 If you change needles to a smaller needle and you force the blood in here, that's not that's just red liquid. That's got cells in it. Okay. But if you force the cells in, you aerosolize the cells outside the, the needle, which breaks them up. That causes hemolysis. Okay. The other, the other reason is we don't want to separate the needle from the drawing apparatus ever. You just throw the whole thing in the shark's container. Grab your tube. Take the shield off. Grab the tube. Come over here. Grab the tube right here. Just going to hold the tube down with the stopper up. And put that in there. And just let the vacuum of the tube pull the blood in there so you avoid uh, cell destruction and hemolysis as you transfer that into an actual vacuum container tube. You don't want to exert pressure on the plunger because that will cause it. If you let the vacuum go ahead and pull it in there, it's just as if it was pulling it from your blood vessels. Okay? Now you're going to take your whole tube, or your whole um, syringe and needle, and throw it right into the biohazard. There you go. Outstanding. And let's show the rest of the crew. Okay, so in, in, instead of just that, we also have curl extra cleaning that you can use for people that bleed.